This is John Black, super chemist. Now, I already did a video called soda lime decarboxylation. Um, so I'm just going to go over this quickly uh, because it is similar to what I'm going to discuss, which is ketonic decarboxylation. They're very similar. Anyways, soda lime decarboxylation, that's just where you take a carbo carboxy group and you use sodium hydroxide and calcium oxide, soda, lime, soda, lime. And you heat it up with a torch, like, you know, in a metal vessel, hopefully stainless steel. And I don't know the mechanism. I can only guess and say that this and this reacts with the acid to make the salt, sodium benzoate and calcium benzoate. And then the heat decarboxylates the CO2, so the carbon dioxide comes off. And a proton is placed on there from either water that's made or water from the atmosphere or another benzoic acid molecule. And uh, you end up with removing this carboxy group and end up with an, a hydrocarbon. You know what I mean? Um, you lose one of the carbons from the carboxylic acid, from the carboxy group. Um, just like down here, you, you got one, two, three, four. Over here, you only have three carbons because that carboxy group got removed and turned into carbon dioxide. Now, I did this reaction. I made some toluic acid, heated it up instead of benzene because you got the methyl group here. I ended up with methyl benzene, which is toluene. I had a terrible yield, um, but it wasn't because of the so I'm decarboxylation. It was more because of making the toluic acid. I got a poor yield on that. Uh, another thing is like I need some uh, butyl amine. Um, instead of making it, I can just go get this is uh, leucine and isoleucine. Um, I don't know which is which, but they're amino acids. And if you decarboxylate them, look at what you end up with. One, two, three, four. That's if you take off the methyl group, that's butylamine. Same down here, you take off the methyl group, that's butylamine. Um, so it's close enough for me. Um, but that's just another example. Now you get about a 70% yield on this, okay? Or you can get a 70%, I'd say. Um, Let's just say that's on average, right? Now, the ketonic decarboxylation, it's the same thing. You basically have an acid, but it reacts with itself. So you have two of the same acids, right? And you heat them up in a stainless steel vessel or whatever, a metal vessel. And you probably use sodium hydroxide and calcium hydroxide to soak soak up the CO2 that is there and you're basically doing the same exact experiment the only difference is is you want to make something different right up here you you, you want the uh, alkane or the uh, hydrocarbon right you just want the carboxyl group removed down here you want to make a ketone ketonic decarboxylation all right now again I don't know the mechanism I can only guess um, but since you're doing the same exact thing, you're going to have uh, competing, and if this gets a 70%, this probably gets a 30%, okay? So it's not a good uh, yield, you know what I'm saying? Um, but let's use acetic acid as an example, okay? Ketonic decarboxylate, and you're going to heat it up with a torch, just like up here. <laughs> let's just use the acids, right? You heat them up. Because uh, you really don't need this stuff. Um, you can uh, just use strong heat. This is basically just to do two things. One is to turn this into a salt, and the other, I mean, yeah, salt, and the other is to soak up the carbon dioxide so it doesn't revert, do a reverse re reaction and go back to what it was. Let's use these as an example. You get H2O, and you get carbon dioxide, and you get a ketone. How does that happen? I want you to look at this. You got two acetic acid um, molecules there. Now, if this 
bond comes over here and these electrons jump on here, right? Then this proton jumps onto these electrons, right? And this carbon, this methyl group, comes up and attacks the double bond. Look at what happens if I move this if I move this thing out of this bond out of the way, right? It comes over here and picks up this hydrogen. Now you have what? H2O, right? Now look at this. You lost the the methyl group there. I mean the uh, bond there, right? This methyl group comes up and creates another bond. And look at what you have. You have acetone, right? Now if this proton jumped off to make the water, the bond there collapses and, and swings over to here, right? And there you go. Now you got a double bond here and a double bond there. Double bond because this is gone, right? This methyl group went up to here. And what do you have? You have CO2. This would actually be straight. But I wanted to draw it like that so you can see how it goes from here to here. Okay. Um, now maybe a better method of doing this is to use the calcium uh, salt of the acid. I'm still using acetic acid. So by using the calcium uh, salt of the acid, you have a built-in um, CO3 scrubber. You know what I mean? Because it's going to make calcium carbonate instead of CO2. You know what I mean? Because you don't want the CO2. This is a reversible reaction. You don't want it to go back. You know what I'm saying? And that might, I'm just guessing, but that might be why this is a better reaction. I would still throw in some calcium oxide, though, just to help soak up the carbon dioxide. Okay, here's a better way, maybe. And it, 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 you should do the calcium salt of the acid, okay? And I'm just guessing, all this is guesswork. I mean, the, the reaction works. Don't get me wrong, that's not to get, the mechanism is the guesswork, okay? But I think the reason why you do this, right, is because look at this. This is the same molecule as that, right? But I have it bent around so that this can attack easily, right? But you can see how now it's kind of forced to come up and react with this, like an intramolecular reaction. And you can see how the calcium is here, calcium is here. But look at this. You got a double bond, your double bond, oh, and your oxygen. What would happen if this bond... Instead of it, it's, it got connected to this O here. See, it's almost there anyways. So I just drew it like that. The calcium is here, right? And the uh, acetone, because this would flip down. See what I'm saying? This kind of exchange, this would go up here and this would go down here. You know what I'm saying? So we already discussed that. But you see how it's... It's already almost there in calcium carbonate acetone form. Um, the impurity would be methane, right? Because if you have uh, this carboxylic acid and uh, you do a soda lime decarboxylation, you end up with methane, right? So that would be your uh, impurity. Now, maybe by using this calcium salt method, maybe it helps prevent from doing the soda lime decarboxylation. It, it, you know what I mean? Because this is uh, easier for this to just do an intramolecular thing here. It's almost, you know what I mean, forced to do it. Maybe, I don't know. I don't know. How to make benzaldehyde, because that's what this video is about, right? Actually, you want to use both of these. You want to use calcium benzoate and the calcium formate. Okay, now I want you to look at this, right? First, let's look at this. How do you know what you're going to make when you put two things together? Okay, here's the acetic acid we did, right? See how I did one has the OHs in red and then a red H there. That's your H2O. Then you got your O and O and a C here, right? See how it's in orange? That's your CO2, okay? So you're going to lose CO2 and you're going to lose water. What happens when that when you lose the water on one and an H on the other with the car, car, carbon dioxide? See how you end up with this line? What if I just drew 
that, and then I took this line over. See how it makes acetone? It's the same way with this, with the benzoic acid and the uh, formate. You do the OH, and the, on this side you have the H, and you have your carbon dioxide. That gets removed. Now, if you notice, there's no blue part over here. There's nothing to attach to this. And that's why you end up with benzaldehyde. And you can do it in the reverse reaction, right? Let's say you say, well, oh, well it reacts in a reverse way. And let's say it's reversed. So I do the, I put the formate on, I mean, the formic acid on this side and the benzoic acid on that side. I still do the OH uh, to do my water, and there's your CO2. When all that disappears, you end up with this and this. You attach them together, and what do you have? Benzaldehyde. So either way, you're making benzaldehyde. Okay, but keep in mind, you're going to have impurities from this stuff because you're competing. You're also doing the lime decarboxylation, even though you don't want to. That's what's it's the same exact reaction. So if you do, a, you can't do one without the other. You know what I'm saying? So what would be your impurities? If you, from the benzoic acid, you'd have benzene as an impurity, right? Also, it's going to react with itself. When it doesn't react with the formate it can, or the formic acid, it can react with the benzoic acid. And what's it going to make? It's going to make that benzophenone. The impurities from your formic acid, you're going to have CO2 because, remember, it doesn't break down on one side. There's nothing there to to hang off because it's going to be saved, you know what I'm saying? Um, so it's going to make CO2. I'm going to just say it makes a little C carbon monoxide, even though I don't think it does, um, because I don't want someone to, I don't know all the safety stuff here. I'm just, also you're going to have some formaldehyde, right? Because if your formic acid reacts with itself, right, you will end up with formaldehyde, as you can see right here. I got formic acid and formic acid. Here's my water. Here's my CO2. This all gets, you know, there's nothing on this side. All that's on this side is the carbonyl. And the carbonyl all by itself is formaldehyde. You can see this is low boiling. It's a gas pretty much. Gas, gas. Those are nothing. This boils at 80 degrees and your product boils at 200. That's a 100 degree difference. This boils around 300 degrees, and this at 200. So there, there's 100 degrees difference in that. You should easily be able to distill that out. Distill out your benzene, distill out your benzaldehyde, and leave this in the pot, right? Then take that benzaldehyde and do a you know, bisulfite adduct and so you can really make it definitely pure. You know what I mean? So I did want to talk about two little reactions here. One was, what if instead of using calcium acetate, right, to make um, acetone, what if you used both particles like I was sh showing before? When you use two formic acids, right, you end up making formaldehyde. Why can't you use this as a method also to make formaldehyde? Um, another reaction I wanted to talk about was up here. And I just thought it was nice because you can make a ring with it. Like, say you have a dipic acid, you have your calcium, or they, I have barium here. You can use barium, too. But everyone can get calcium. Barium is, you know, an odd, an odd metal. Anyways, you do your, you heat it up, and it will do a ketonic decarboxylation within itself. And when it does, it'll be attached now. You know what I mean? Think of this as two acetic acids, right? If I erase this line here, then you end up with a ketone, right? Since they're connected, you end up with a, it's still a ketone, but you end up with a, uh, a ring. Just guessing here, but if 70% is goes for sodium decarboxylation, 30% goes for the ketonic decarboxylation. Now that's using, making a symmetrical ketone. We're not making a symmetrical ketone. So now that 30% is going to be, say, split in half because you're making formaldehyde and benzophenone. So now you're down to a 15% yield. 